Greetings, Earthlings. First thing I wanted to say is a huge thank you for 250,000 subs. Y'all are amazing. I appreciate you so, so much. Today, I am back with a new series. It is going to be called a re-review, and we are going to take a microphone that we've reviewed in the past and then put it through the system that we have developed over the last six years. First up on the chopping block is the classic Blue Snowball USB microphone with multiple polar patterns. If you are interested in this microphone, it will cost you $70. Like always, I'll throw some links down below. For this review, I have the microphone connected directly to my Mac. My input gain is set at around 25%. I am recording at 16-bit 44.1 kilohertz. I am set on the cardioid mode, and I will not do any kind of post-processing, but I may boost it in post, so check the doobly-doo or the lower third to see what I diddly did. And now let's talk about what comes in the box. Of course you are going to get the microphone. You'll get a desktop tripod stand, approximately a six foot mini USB to USB-A cable, and a couple pieces of documentation. Then as far as the build quality, it's really nothing to write home about and doesn't feel that great. The entire ball is made out of plastic, but underneath the plastic, you do have a little bit of a metal mesh pop filter grill, and you have a metal blue logo on the front. Directly above the grill, you will find a red light to let you know that the microphone is plugged in and getting power, but this is not a clipping indicator light. It does not give you any information other than the fact that it is on. On the bottom, you will find a 5 8 inch threading to put this on a microphone stand or the desktop stand. On the rear of the microphone, you will find a three-way selector switch, one being for the cardioid polar pattern, two being for the cardioid polar pattern with a 10 decibel pad, and three being omnidirectional. And I want to butt in here and make it abundantly clear, for the majority of people using this microphone, you will want to be on one if you are doing spoken word or if you just want to record stuff directly in front of it. Two will be if you're recording super loud sound sources. Three will be if you want to capture all the way around the microphone. And lastly, you'll find a mini USB port. And to be completely honest, this was a shock to me because when I reviewed the Snowball a couple of years ago, it was a USB B port or whatever the standard printer jack is. Quite different. Good upgrade there, Blue. And if this at all matters to you, this microphone is made in China. It's made in China. It's, <laughs> it's made in China. Then as far as the specs, this microphone has a cardioid and an omnidirectional polar pattern. It has a frequency response of 40 hertz to 18 kilohertz. It has an analog to digital converter, which goes up to 16 bit and 44.1 kilohertz. And that's pretty much all that we know. That's all the information we have. We don't get anything else. Pretty limited on the specs, but you shouldn't expect much for $70, I guess? Now I am spinning around the blue snowball on the cardioid mode to 90 degrees. We'll continue around to 180 degrees. Here's the rear of the microphone. Continuing around to the second 90 degree angle. There you go. And then we will rotate and end at the front of the microphone. This is mode two and the only thing that's different is we are quieter. I'll go ahead and rotate around 90 degrees going around 180 then to 70 or the second 90 degree angle, and then rotating and ending at the front. And lastly, we have the omnidirectional mode and we should be able to rotate all the way around this with very minimal change to the sound of our voice because it is omnidirectional, should pick it up all the way around. There you go. Now let's test the plosive rejection of this thing. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Now I am right on top of the microphone to really accentuate the proximity effect, and here is how that is sounding. Now I'm about three inches off of the mic with it pointed at the corner of my mouth, and here is how it is sounding. About one foot away from the microphone, two feet away from the microphone, and about four feet away from the microphone. Please help. I'm stuck. Now I am typing on a keyboard with Gatoron blue switches to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for all you Leet Gaming folk, now I am typing on the sad W keys. Here is how the microphone sounds in a well-treated room on the cardioid polar pattern. 
All right, here is the microphone. I am on the cardioid polar pattern in a completely untreated room, and here is how the audio is sounding. Now I want to see how well the microphone does at rejecting bumps of the desk, so I will go ahead and tap on the desk to see how much of that it rejects. And I'll tap the boom arm. Now I am going to go ahead and tap on the body to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies. Now I'm going to go ahead and throw the blue snowball in my box of doom so we can measure the noise floor of the microphone's internal preamps. Then as far as latency with the sample rate set at 44.1 kilohertz, the I.O. buffer size at 64 samples, we have a 9 millisecond round trip latency or a 4.5 millisecond output latency. When we jump up to 128 samples, we have 12 milliseconds round trip or 6 milliseconds output. And when we jump up to 256 samples, we have 18 milliseconds round trip or 9 milliseconds output. Now I want to do a very quick comparison between the Blue Snowball and a couple of other USB microphones to see if it still stacks up against the competition, but we're also doing something a little bit special because I am going to be demonstrating the predecessors to the Blue Snowball, the XLR Snowballs. How cool is that? Like always, we'll start on the microphone that we are reviewing. This is the Blue Snowball 16-bit 44.1 gain at 25%. And here is how it sounds at 6 inches. And first up, we are on the original Blue Snowball that I reviewed. Same distance. I did have to change my gain to 50%. Again, this uses the USB-B connector. And I did try to connect and compare the Snowball Ice. I could not get my computer to recognize it. I will have to repurchase a Snowball Ice and do something with that. But this is the original Snowball. And is there a change? This has had a couple of falls, which may be affecting the tone. There you go. Comparison, 50% versus 25%. Six years old versus a month old. Back on the blue snowball, here is how it is sounding. Same distance, same gain setting. Nothing has changed. And here is how it sounds. Let's jump to the next microphone. Now I am on the Razer Siren Mini. This is a cardioid only USB condenser microphone. This costs around $50, so it is $20 cheaper than the Blue Snowball. And here is how it is sounding, six inches off, gain set at 50%. This is the difference that 10 years can make. The Snowball is about a decade old. The Razer Siren Mini was released last year. There you go, just a quick comparison. Let's do some more. Back on the snowball, get a good feel for it, listen to it, and get an understanding of the tonality of it before we jump to this next mic. Now I am on the Samson Q2U, which is an XLR and USB dynamic microphone. This goes for about $70, but I am about 6 inches off. My gain is at 50%. I am recording 16-bit 44.1, and there you go. Samson Q2U, XLR, USB dynamic. Let's jump back to the snowball and do some more comparisons. Again, we're back on the blue snowball. Nothing has changed. Same distance, same gain setting, same recording resolution, everything. When I say nothing has changed, nothing has changed. <laughs> Let's jump to the next mic. Now I am on the Audio-Technica ATR2100 USB. This is another XLR and USB dynamic mic. This goes for anywhere between $70 to $80 to $90, depending on the stock. 
and I am again recording 16-bit 44.1. My gain on this is set at 75%, and here is how it is sounding. Let's jump back to the snowball and do some more comparisons. Who would have thunk it? We're back on the blue snowball again, because why wouldn't we be? And here is how it is sounding. Let's jump to another microphone. Next, I am on the Blue Yeti Nano, which is a newer offering from Blue. Has the exact same polar patterns as the Blue Snowball. I am six inches off. My gain is set at around 20%. And here is how it is sounding on the cardioid mode. There you go. Let's do some more comparisons. I strongly dislike doing these tests with USB microphones because I don't have one file. I end up with 10 of them because I have to stop recording, switch out the USB mic, all of that. But this is the Snowball, let's do another mic. Next, I am on the Rode NT-USB Mini. This is a $100 cardioid-only USB-C condenser microphone. Connected to my Mac, my gain is set at around 25 to 30%, somewhere there. I am recording, again, 16-bit, but this time, I believe, 48 kilohertz. And this is how it is sounding. There you go. Rode NT-USB Mini, $100 for $70. Are you getting a better value with the extra 30 bucks? Let me know. Comments down below. What a shocker. I am sure that you are taken aback. You are bewildered that we're back on the snowball again. But here is how it sounds. Listen to it. Get a feeling for the tone. And let's jump to another microphone. Next up, we are getting into very interesting territory. This is the Blue The Ball, which is a dynamic microphone, but an active dynamic microphone. I am six inches off of this thing. No switches, no nothing, but my 48 volts are on. My gain is set all the way at 100% recording 16-bit 48 kilohertz through the Focusrite 18i20. And there you go. That's the Blue The Ball. Made in Latvia, when they were still Baltic Latvian Universal Electronics. I think that that's what blue stands for. There you go. More tests. Hey, we are back on the snowball again. And if you had not guessed that, I don't know what you were thinking. You probably are thinking about something much more important than the blue snowball. But this is the blue snowball. Listen to it. Let's do another microphone comparison. Next up, we are on the Blue Kickball, which is an XLR condenser microphone with a switch on the rear. This is a kick drum microphone, if I'm not mistaken, and it is very resonant. Lots of that. I have the switch set to the center. Let me make a quick change. Now I have made the switch to the negative position, and here is how it is sounding. Sounds as though that is a high pass filter. And now I have moved the switch to the plus, and that sounds like a low mids boost for a kick drum. There you go. That is the blue kickball. Let's do some more. Who knows if this is the last microphone we're comparing it against. I am just making these and saying words, and hopefully I have enough to do the comparisons. This is the snowball. Nothing's changed. Let's jump to another microphone. Next, we are on the Blue 8 Ball, another XLR condenser microphone from Blue. If I did not mention it, the kick ball's gain was set at around 345. The gain for this is set at 215. I am 6 inches off, 48 kilohertz, 16 bit, and there are no switches or anything, but here is how this is sounding. I just had to include these because I bought these a while ago. I tried to contact Blue to try to get some history on the progression of these microphones. They didn't respond. I don't blame them. I'm not too kind to their microphones, but there you go. That is the Blue 8 Ball. And I think that this will be the last microphone that we're comparing it against. Get a good feeling for the Blue Snowball. Here is how it is sounding, and let's jump to that last microphone. And you knew it was coming. I knew it was coming. I cannot help myself. Now I am on the U87 AI from Neumann. Cardioid mode, no filters engaged. Recording through the focus right. My gain is set at 1045-ish. And here is how it is sounding. $32 to $3,600 versus $70 for a USB condenser microphone. Just had to include this because I got to get as much use out of it as I can. Those are all the comparisons. Let me know in the comments down below which of the microphones did you like the best. Did you find that interesting going through all of the 
predecessors to the Blue Snowball, the XLR versions? Let me know in the comments down below. If not, I'll stop doing that in future videos if I have alternatives. Okay, music test time. <laughs> I'm surprised this mic is here. Let's go ahead. It's time to re-review this mic. And you better believe I am going to clickbait the heck out of this thumbnail. It's going to be, is it still worth it in 2021? Do, 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 do. And it's going to be amazing. But really, I haven't, I haven't tested this in about six years, and the processes have changed quite a lot. That's really why I'm doing it, not the clickbait. The clickbait's just an added bonus. Cool. <laughs> Okay, to be fair, the Snowball was originally released in 2005, and at that time, for $130, it was amazing to be able to get this quality of audio into your computer, but being that it's 16 years old now, I think it's starting to show its age. And first up, in terms of pros, it is very straightforward and easy to use. It's not going to confuse anyone. The latency is surprisingly low, and I'm happy to see that they upgraded the output port. But then as far as cons, I found the cardioid polar pattern to sound extremely nasally, and when we got to the off-axis coloration, get out of town, it sounded terrible. The omnidirectional polar pattern sounded overly boosted and harsh. Additionally, the conversion is limited to 16-bit 44.1 kilohertz, but let me reiterate, 16 years old, and I also dislike the fact that there's no headphone port to offer zero latency monitoring or computer playback. Next up, as far as my overall thoughts and opinions of this microphone, on the electric guitar, I would call it MIDI. Very mid-forward and surprisingly not bad. I didn't hate it. The lows were nice and controlled, very mid-forward sound, but the top end does get quite a bit sizzly. Nothing to write home about, but for the price, I couldn't really complain. Then on the acoustic guitar, I wasn't a big fan of it. If you do want all the mids of your acoustic guitar, it does that, but I think the mids are a bit too dominant, and that leaves a little bit to be desired in the lows and the highs, and it just sounds a little bit dead and claustrophobic. Next up for singing, I know I sound like a broken record, but mids, mids, mids. This is a mids machine if you are on the cardioid mode, which most people will be. If you don't like mids, you are not going to like the sound of this microphone, or you are going to have to EQ this microphone's recordings to heck. I have heard people EQ it and get some good sounds, but I think there are better options out there at cheaper prices now. And lastly, for spoken word, I think you get a nasal and artificial mid sound, which is very unappealing. In 2005, it was amazing to be able to get this level of sound into your computer for the price, but now microphones and USB mics that are affordable have come so far it's kind of an unacceptable sound to have. And to wrap up and answer the question in the thumbnail, is the blue snowball still worth it in 2021? No. I don't think you should buy it, and I don't think it's worth it in 2021. Reason being, technology has come far enough, and I think something like the Razer Siren Mini sounds better, it is $20 cheaper, and it is smaller. Of course, that does assume that you only need the cardioid polar pattern, but I think the majority of people buying the Snowball will only need the cardioid polar pattern to pick up their voice in front of it and reject noise behind it. If that is you in 2021, Razor Siren Mini, save 20 bucks. All right, that is it for the first episode of Re-Review, and I would love to know what you thought of it. Let me know what microphone you want me to re-review next. Also, higher quality audio 
is uploaded to podcastage.com for my reviews. If you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Hated it, thumbs down. Want more videos? Subscribe, logo down beneath me, and hit that bell icon. Get notified of everything. And if you want to support the channel and become one of these amazing people over here, you can do so by clicking that join button and joining at the $5 tier or higher. It really truly does help me continue to bring you these videos. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. I will talk to you next week.